Welcome to Chalk Talk with Mr. C. All right, today, before the big quiz, we need to go over a few things about pronouns, more specifically subjective and objective pronouns. What I need you to do is try to contain your excitement. <clears throat> I understand that everyone loves grammar. Everyone loves pronouns, subjective, objective. Everyone loves adjectives, adverbs, nouns, verbs, subject complements, subjects, predicates, direct objects. I could go on, but you already know because you already love it, right? Right? Okay, why am I lying? Nobody loves grammar, okay? <laughs> Nobody loves it, but trust me, it's extremely important to learn it and use it properly, okay? I'll give you a scenario. You and someone else is going in for a job interview. You have equal qualifications, the same amount of experience, same amount of education, same work ethic. One of you speaks perfect English, grammatically. The other does not. Who do you think is going to get that job? The one who speaks perfect English. So, just follow along with me, okay? I'm going to try and make this as easy and as painless as I can. Uh, like I said, today's lesson is pronouns, subjective and objective. So what would the English language look like without grammar, without syntax? Well, it looks something like this. <clears throat> Subject, A, am, crystal, we, us, them, Charlie, indirect object, me, I, gave, I, her, she, to, they, them, we, us, direct object, Susan, Mary, a book, and him, he, predicate, direct object. Not a whole lot of sense here, okay? Without grammar and without syntax, these are just words on the page that have no meaning. It's only when we start putting these words into phrases and sentences does anything start to make sense. Now, in order to go into subjective and objective pronouns, we kind of have to start at the beginning. Hang with me. Okay, I'm probably not even going to mention subjective and objective pronouns for a little bit. We have to make sure the base is there. <clears throat> See? So, what do you need first when you're composing a sentence? Well, you need a noun. Okay? So let's pick a noun. Let's say John is our noun. Okay? John being the noun... And we'll see in a minute that John is the one who's going to be performing an action. John works as the subject of our sentence. Okay? So, John. One word, not a sentence, but we're getting there. What makes it something other than a sentence? Well, it's just a word. It's a word, and John's not doing anything. A sentence needs action. Okay? So, action words, we're looking at verbs. John's got to be doing something, okay? So, let's pick this. John gave, okay? Gave, obviously, linked to John because that's what John is doing. Gave is the action in the sentence, and therefore, it is the predicate of the sentence. Okay, <clears throat> so... There are some verbs that don't need anything else with them. Noun and a verb, that's it. Such as, John cried. John yelled. Now, gave is a little bit different because John has to give what? He's giving something, right? What is it that he's giving? Let's say he's given a book. John is giving what? A book. Now, if this answers the question, what is John giving, answers the question that is presented by the subject and the predicate in the form of what, it makes it the direct object. So, John, subject, noun, gave, predicate, gave what? A book, making this the direct object, okay? 
So John gave a book. Okay. He gave a book. Well, there's another question. Who did he give a book to? Well, let's say he gives the book to, oh, Susan. John gave a book to Susan. Now, if a book answers the question of what? Susan then answers the question of to whom? Making that the indirect object. So, here's our easy sentence, right? John gave a book to Susan. Here's the thing. Had we taken these out, and all that was there was John gave, you would understand that that's not a complete sentence. Would you be able to put in those terms the fact that it needs a direct object or that it needs an indirect object, or that this is uh, a transitive verb that requires a direct object? No, you just know it doesn't make any sense. Okay? And as far as direct objects and indirect objects and transitive verbs and intransitive verbs, that's another chalk talk. Okay? Right now, we're setting up pronouns. <coughs> okay? So, John gave a book to Susan. We know that without a book to Susan, it doesn't make sense. Okay? It's learning why it doesn't make sense. That's the important thing. Okay? So, moving on. Let's give these a bit of a structure. Okay? So, back to our original sentence. John gave a book to Susan. So we have this. Now, if I replace John with something, I'm going to have to replace it with a pronoun. Yeah, I can replace John with Crystal. That's fine. It's not the lesson. Let's get into the pronouns here. We have a choice to make. Do I use I or me? Now, when it's between I and me and it happens at the beginning of the sentence or serves as the subject, it's pretty easy because you're not going to say, me gave a book to Susan. Okay? That just sounds wrong. But once again, we need to understand why that is. Hang with me and hopefully I can make that happen for you. Okay? So... So obviously, it's I gave a book to Susan, right? Whoop, wait a minute. Let's change that real quick. So obviously, it's I gave a book to Susan, okay? So the pronoun I is now substituting for John and it acts as the subject because it is performing the action. I gave a book to Susan. Now, if we get rid of this, let's get rid of Susan and substitute something. We need to put a pronoun in there for Susan. Well, Susan's a female, so the only, chance, the only choices we've got are her and she. So, I gave a book to she. We all know that doesn't make sense either. I'm going to get into why in a minute. But just on what sounds right, without thinking too much about it, we know that it's I gave a book to her, right? So, let's get rid of she. Now, I gave a book to her. Great. That works. Right? Here's the thing. Let's look at that a little closer. I gave a book to her. You already know that works. Now we're going to take a look at why it works. Okay? I take her out. I take I out. Let's switch them. Her gave a book to I. That's not right. That's nowhere near right. And some of you right now are starting to piece this together, the difference between subjective and objective pronouns, which we're going to get to in a second. Let's just look at how it sounds. 
her gave a book to I. We all know that's not right. So, let's put them back. Whoops. I gave a book to her. So, why aren't they interchangeable? Because I, here, acts as the subject. And, more than that, serves as a subjective pronoun. Ah, starting to make sense. I is a subjective pronoun, which means it is performing the action or is the subject of the sentence. Can her be the subject of the sentence? No. Her can only receive action. Okay? It cannot perform the action. Her can only perform the action, cannot be the subject of the sentence. It can only be the direct or indirect object. Therefore, her is an objective pronoun. Okay? So, there we have it. So, let's get a little more in depth, okay? And see how these work together. We know that her is an objective pronoun, I is a subjective pronoun. But, what about these two? Pronouns, yes, but the pronoun is acting as the indirect object. So, if I switch these, I gave her a book. Does her automatically become the direct object? No. It doesn't change. I gave what? A book. To whom? To her, the indirect object. But does that make her a subjective pronoun? No, because it is still objective, okay? It is still an objective pronoun. So let's put these back where they were. Go into a couple more things here. Oops. Now, once again, I gave her a book. When does this ever change to me? Because we put that in there, we know it doesn't make sense. Me gave her a book. No, no, no. What if I put a bunch of people in front of it? Now we have Kate, Charlie, Mary, and me gave her a book. Does it sound right? Does me all of a sudden become part of this compound subject and, and therefore a subjective pronoun? No. It does not matter how many people come before I as a subjective pronoun. It doesn't matter. You can stack 100 people in front of that. It's still going to be Kate, Charlie, Mary, and I gave her a book. Nothing changes. Now, what is really, really... Uh, popular right now is to end every sentence with I. So, 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 and so, so, and so, and I. Because it sounds proper, it's not. I is a subjective pronoun, therefore it acts as the subject of the sentence. We getting there? Okay, now, let's group these. Bear with me. We group these. Get rid of the I. Let's bring a proper name in there. Susan. Let's make Susan the subject. Susan gave a book to Kate, Charlie, Mary, and, well, 
This is what I was just talking about. Right now, everybody wants to put an I at the end because it sounds proper. Too many people are saying, you always use I. No, you don't. I is subjective. And apparently so is Kate, Charlie, Mary, Ann. Now, I is subjective. Therefore, it cannot act as the indirect object or the direct object. It's always going to be me. Best way to figure that out? Drop them, add two, and there you have it. Susan gave a book to me. And it doesn't change. It's just like the subjective. Just like the subjective I, it doesn't change just because you add a bunch of people to it. Okay? It's still to me. So, Susan gave a book. Well, <laughs> let's uh, ungroup that. Kate, Charlie, Mary, and me. You understand? And again, it doesn't matter how many people come before me. Me is still an objective pronoun. That doesn't change. Okay? No matter how many people we stack in front of it. Now, specifically to subjective and objective pronouns, what we can do, there's a little test. If you haven't choose, <clears throat> and Apex makes you do this, okay, in a different in a different format, but think of it in these terms if you're having trouble with it, okay? Subjective pronouns. The work is the subject, right? So whoever this is can run. If it makes sense to put the pronoun in front of this, then it works. Him ran. No, him didn't. She ran? Yes, she did. Subjective pronoun. Them ran? No, them didn't. Not working. I, this should be easy. We've been doing this for five minutes. I ran? Absolutely. Subjective pronoun. Okay, so put these together. I, come here. I ran now to, to what? To her? I ran to her? Yeah. Come here. Seriously. Objective pronoun. I ran to... Well, say they ran to us. Or she ran to us. Does that work? Yes, it does. Objective pronoun. So, as we do this, they ran. That worked. To me, yes. Seriously. Objective. Subjective. To him, yes. We, yes, we ran to him. Objective. Subjective. You're seeing this come together, right? He ran to them. Objective. Subjective. Them ran? No. They ran to them. Subjective, objective. Subjective pronouns can work as the subject of a sentence. Objective pronouns, well, let's just say don't and can't. Objective cannot perform the action. Subjective does. Okay. I hope this helped. If you have any any trouble or any issues after you've seen this, if you don't pass the quiz, uh, please come and see me, and uh, we'll work more on it, okay? But for now, that ends Chalk Talk. Hope you're ready to tackle that quiz. Thanks for listening. If I can get out of here. There we go. Take it easy.